Hey there, Butterscotch Buttercake. When people first see the hex chart, immediately I can show them that it did 1000x to the top and it's about 303x today. However, one of the most common things you'll hear people say is the origin address owns 85% of the coins. They find it too risky. But I've got some life shattering information for you, okay? Hex is just as liquid and centralized as Bitcoin was in its early days. Now, it's not specifically the same percent, but you have one person who could send it to zero. And I'm going to show you the evidence right now, okay? You know, let's walk through it together. We actually have, this is pretty cool information, we actually have the liquidity for Bitcoin back to the very very start. Your mind is going to blow, okay? We're going to zoom in for this. Let's get some dramatic zoom in. Look at this. You see here, the top number right now, 2.29 million. That's how much Bitcoin is on all the exchanges. Now, hey, <laughs> you're going to be shocked at what it was at the start, okay? 2.29 million. If we go back to 2017, it was about 1 million coins, if we go back even more, let's go back, let's go down here to, to 2014 here, 200,000 coins, 300,000. But let's go back to when Bitcoin did its first 10,000x at the very start. Have a look at it. Right around here. Look at that number. 780 Bitcoin and they were $6 each. Look what the liquidity was. We can actually do it. 780 Bitcoin. That's right. I know nobody believes it because it's absolutely nuts. 780 Bitcoin when they were $6 each. <laughs> you had $4,680 of liquidity for this imaginary internet coin at the start. Look at this number, friends. $4,600. Let's go back and see what Bitcoin actually did. Check this out, friends. Check this out. Let's go. So this is crazy, right? I have a chart here for you and I've posted it. Please like, subscribe, bell button, all friends. Have a look at this. So in the early days, these are the facts. Bitcoin massively, massively centralized. Okay. Satoshi mined... 1 million Bitcoin for himself. He had 1 million Bitcoin. If you read the language of his early posts, he implies it's more of a donation if that person never spends it. But you don't know that. You had no freaking idea what was going on at the start. No way would you have believed this anonymous person on the internet, no avatar, no location, couldn't verify their existence. There was no way you were going to trust this person centralized ownership. He owned 20% of all the coins. So back then, firstly, 99% of people, you don't, you don't even know how to check the supply. You don't know where to look. Only the super high tech geeks knew what to do. People still don't even know how to check today. That's how much in the dark you were back then. And look at this. Bitcoin still rallied 9,800x. Basically a 10,000x. I even have the chart here. Look at this. And what I did for a realistic look, I put it on a linear chart, not a log chart. Because I want you to see what this thing looked like at the very start. You have to see it. Because everybody sits on their high horse now and says, Oh, my back is so straight. My slippers are so fluffy. Look at this. I would have held. Really? Really now. One dude owns 1 million Bitcoin, most of the supply, and he mined it early, and you were going to hold through this chart. So it's easy to sit here and say, criticize Hex, but I'm going to go through this even deeper with you. Look at this. Bitcoin was centralized at the start too. Centralized ownership. 
Okay, because it's really, there's two forms of decentralization, friends. There's the decentralization, like in your mind, right? So decentralization really refers to like the power control of the network. Okay, so yes, technically, most things are decentralized. We know that. You go, oh, but nobody can basically destroy Ethereum for the ERC-20s that they're listed on. But then you'll say, well, I don't even really care about that power of the network part. All I care about is the money and ownership part. That's what 99% of people care about. You don't care about, oh, okay, who can transfer power, who can vote, who can change a code. You don't really care about that. You care about the centralized ownership and who can dump on you. That's all you care about. That's what most people care about. And that's what you were looking at here in the early Bitcoin days. Did 9,800x. You just made this person rich. Okay, so firstly, you didn't understand liquidity back then, okay? You have no idea what, how to even look it up, what to do. You don't even know all the exchanges. There's probably just one, early really dodgy ones, right? So you only had $4,840 of liquidity, 780 Bitcoin, right? And, and you know, it was around 1,000 Bitcoin a, f a few months later, but you had no idea, friends. Imagine, right? You, so this is all that's going through your mind back then. You go, okay. It's a thousand. There's a the price of Bitcoin is six dollars back then, and this person, this mysterious person, owns one million of them. You just made this person six million dollars out of nowhere, nowhere, thin air. So you can't sit here and pretend like back in the day. You would have any idea what to do or how to think about this, how to conceptualize this. What's decentralization? You don't care. You just know that, oh my God, this one mysterious figure who I trust not to dump. And by the way, you had no trust back then. You had to trust them not to dump. That person made $6 million and each Bitcoin was $6. That's why all the early, art, early articles from Wired and all these other websites that were writing about Bitcoin, they called it, they called it a religion, a cult. They said, Satoshi's disappeared. Satoshi's getting enriched. We've always done currencies of the people and they always fail so many that's all the language that was out there extreme fud very interesting when you look at this side by side hex for example okay so don't forget this just like the origin address in hex in bitcoin in the first few years you have to trust this guy you go please don't exit on me okay now we look back with our lenses, rose-colored, and we're like, wow, yeah, it all worked out. But you had no, how the hell were you going to forecast this, okay? So it was very unknown. You were completely in the shadows. And I even have the supply distribution for Bitcoin back here. Look, there were total 5 million Bitcoin back then, and you didn't even probably know how to look it up. No one did. And look at this, you know, he had one in five, one in five Bitcoin, and he got it early. And you had no idea, was he, were his limit offers just on one exchange and he was just sucking in, vacuuming everyone's money? Isn't it crazy to think that maybe some coins out there exist today where people say the same FUD? Now, look, I completely understand if you think this way because I thought it too. I'm like, well, the founder, Ricardo Corazon, he sounds really smart. He, when I first... Started watching his interviews. I thought, man, this guy's going to do the runner one day. <laughs> I really thought this, he's just going to mysteriously disappear. You know, because when you come across somebody really rational, logical, smart, you're like, man, this person is not even human. They don't skip a beat. They're so rational. They don't stutter. They don't make mistakes. It, it, it's crazy to think about, right? So it's like you're, you're talking and you're looking at an Android. Someone's just been programmed like this. So I completely understand it. But this, I, I'm sharing, sharing you this message, this is not a good reason to not be long, a strong, growing network effect that is positively like a religion, like a cult, gets accused of being a Ponzi, everyone being brainwashed, which is exactly what you want to see because it's the same as the early Bitcoin days. You see that liquidity, friends, all right? I, back in 2021, so this this was made in 2021, and I have one like. Let's see who it was. <gasps> From Duchampy Chomp. Look at this. Now accepting tummy rubs and tasty snacks. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. 
I love tummy rubs and I love tasty snacks. So shout out to Mr. Crypto Coffee here. This was back in 2021. Here I am learning about the liquidity. Mr. Crypto Coffee blew my mind. I'm like, wow, they had the early liquidity trackers for Bitcoin back then. And look, I even show you good info to know about Hex. Bitcoin in its second year, right? Bitcoin in its second year as a percent of its total supply only had 0.01125% tiny. So it was like roughly 900 Bitcoin of the total supply. That's how thin the liquidity was. And then in its second year, Hex has 0.017%. You know, it's interesting. It actually has less today, but it's July 2021. So the price was much higher. So it makes sense. Okay. So Hex has pound for pound. If you go back in time, Hex has plus 50% more liquidity than even Bitcoin did. Right. So this is edge. Okay. Competitive edge for you to know. Ricardo, when he made Hex, completely emulated Bitcoin, top to bottom. All right. You know, for example, if you heard of a little man called Elon Musk, now Elon Musk, when he made PayPal, he went to the concept of money and he analyzed money from first principles. If you listen to Elon's interviews, he says money at its fundamental core is just information that we send through each other. Now, when most people hear this sentence, they go, ah, yeah, yeah, just some robot talking. No, but you, you got you to gotta understand what's going on here. This is a man who made a billion-dollar company which helped you transfer money. So to conquer that field and be an entrepreneur there, he had to go and see and truly understand what is actual money. What is it? And then he realized, oh, my God, it's just digits on the screen. It's, it's an accounting book. So it's what we say is money is just, um, it's a ledger. You know, I've got $100 and you got $300. And when we exchange, now I've got 50, now you've got 350. So that's what he, he came to the conclusion of, right? So when he says this, that's the background he's coming from. Now, at the end of the day, when you come back and you look at all of this together, all right, I'm telling you, Richard sit, sat down, he went through every single aspect of Bitcoin and he, he did some tweaks to it. All right. But one thing you can't tweak and emulate was the immaculate conception of Bitcoin. You can't tweak that. But you can do something similar, which is probably what he's got up his sleeve later on. Maybe he actually just sends the coins to a burner address, perhaps, right? I made a video on this ready. I made some tweets on this because at the end of the day, it would be pretty cool for a neutral currency when everybody knows, oh, wow, we're actually free and unshackled. But this is like 10 years down the track. We're still early, right? Now, the concept of this is not new. When we talk about central ownership, friends, this is this has been done before. On this planet Earth, there's a country, you may have heard of it, heard of it. It's called the United States of America. And they had their first president named Mr. George Washington. Scroll down here, right? The story. Why did Sir George Washington step down? Look at this. Washington feared that if he were to die while in office, Americans would view the presidency as a lifetime appointment. Instead, he decided to step down from power, providing the standard of a two-term limit. So this concept of centralization even started in America. But look what happened. These people have all the power at the start and then they give it away. So this is very interesting. If you try the socialist and communist approach in crypto, it's just like running a company. If you try to hand out a product to everybody, no one values it. It becomes just like tap water. That's what the experiment shows. Over and over again, we've done this a thousand times. You hand out your coin to everybody. There were so many experiments, 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, all the altcoins trying to be like Bitcoin. They handed it out everywhere, but they were not worth anything. People just kept dumping them because there was no value. There was no financial and emotional investment. It's the same thing with crypto and also with power and centralization. Most of these coins that I've noticed, and you can go check them yourself, if they try to start perfect at the beginning, perfectly decentralized, they don't go anywhere. We don't have anybody who's actually be able to do it. 
You have to have central control at the start and then give it away to the people. And it's exactly what Bitcoin did. So this concept, me and you, we're sitting here on the sidelines and we're just saying, oh, Bitcoin, you know, went up 10,800x. Woohoo. It's up so much percent. But no, when, when Ricardo was actually making hex, he looked at this. He knows, okay, you know, what were core to the attributes about Bitcoin and made it successful, right? And it's the whole concept of starting centralized and then dispersing it over time. It's the same thing with Hex, right? The exact same thing, right? So even I have updated posty. So don't forget, man, only 880 Bitcoin on the liquidity in its second year. You know when I tell this number to people, they don't believe me. No one actually believes there's only this much because there's 2.2 million today. Your mind cannot conceptualize. You're like, what? This thing was going to go on to change the world. How come there was only 880 Bitcoin on liquidity? Yes, that's right. No one had any idea. So there's so much information you can gather by looking at history, right? So when you see this chart, look, I don't want you to go away with this conclusion of, okay, I'm just going to go buy everything centralized. <laughs> you know you can't do that. You know that's not good enough. I'm just letting you know there. No, right? If you're on the fence because you think that a coin needs to be decentralized to be successful, I'm telling you now you're wrong. This is the truth. The truth is... By the time a coin reaches decentralization status, you, my friends, you're too late. You're really late. And I mean it's over now. You're going to get diminished baby boom gains by that point. you got to get in early when it's centralized. Just like how in the beginning of Bitcoin, right, when there was only, look at this, 800 coins, 1,000 coins on the exchanges, and Bitcoin's $5, right? So it had nothing to do with the price. Look, the supply, there was so little there. Satoshi had most of the coins here. Satoshi could have sat on an exchange with an infinite offer, and everyone just could have kept buying at $6. He could have cashed out $6 million for himself, okay? Now, that number seems small because we're talking about trillions today, but back then, the industry didn't exist. None of this existed. What if Bitcoin had a bug that it couldn't recover from? So many unknowns. So at the end of the day, centralization, you can say it's actually critical. It has to be there at the start. From what we know of, we haven't seen any experiment where things succeed completely decentralized at the start, right? The whole industry is birthed on this concept. And we, the people... We like to follow this as well because we want to follow a leader. It's true. We want to follow someone who gives direction, who teaches everyone, who everybody molds their behavior off. And that's exactly what happened with Bitcoin. And that's what's happening with Hex. So I'm telling you, don't come into the community and judge. Keep an open heart and open mind. You might not give this anything any value, but I'm telling you other people do. And he, I am a deep value hunt tour, right? With a boat for hunting. Deep value hunter. Deep value gives you the highest return. But there is a sacrifice. The sacrifice is you must be willing to tell everybody that you don't care what they think. You don't care what they say. You listen, but you're still going to make your own decision. You are your own man. You are your own woman. You are your own duck. Because hunting deep value means you got to go through everything that I've just presented to you, right? Now, remember, at the end of the day, this does not mean let's just go FOMO by, woo! I'm just letting you know there is still speculation. And the speculation is that it will continue the way as it is, right? You got to take a risk with anything in life. There are no guarantees. However, I do, I feel it in my loins. I feel it in my, my knee and my pointy elbows. When we look back in 2025, 2029, when we look back, people are going to look at this origin address and see it as a gift because it's true, right? So my final message, friends, right? This origin address that owns 85% of the coins, over time, Hex's supply is going up and you can get it by a staking, 
okay? Which they now call burning, but it'll just, it's called staking, right? So it's staking. The origin address is unstaked, okay? Unstaked. The origin address gets diluted every year. If I estimated, I just, if you just run it out, I think by the year 2029, the origin address, instead of having 85% of the coins, will only have 2029, OA will only have 50% of the coins because you've inflated them, right? And then it probably halves again and slows down even more by by 15 years or 20 years. So this is important information. Not everyone knows this. Obviously, if you've done your homework, you know this. So I want you to know that this, what you consider as a big fee, oh, the centralization and stuff. No, no, no. There's a plan to dilute this over time. That's why it's an opportunity and a gift if you understand it. Because what, what I always tell you, firstly, you keep your back straight. And I always say to you, noobs, investing noobs, invest based off today. All right? Semi-noobs, they're still noobs, they invest based off yesterday. They're trying to use the past, all right? But professional, winner, baby doll, baby, baby cakes, butterscotch biscuits, we invest based off the future. What is the future going to look? What's the supply going to look like? What's the liquidity going to look like? What directions are going to be? Don't forget, friends, tell your mum and your dad that you love them.